do that. Now, Malcolm says something about you can't be at peace if you're not free. And on that ticket topic, start it off, start us off, Brother Jim. What about that? We're well, talking about unity and freedom and peace among African Americans. Start us off. Well, you know, in the African community, um, the one that exists and the one that we have to build, those things exist. You know, in the present African community, we are together whether we know it or not. Black people are together, uh, especially in the inner city area, um, because we are forced by circumstance <laughs> to be together. Now, what plays out in that is the culture norms, the culture, culture truisms. Now, a lot of that don't exist because we, we are scattered people, mentally, physical, intellectually, and a whole bunch of other things. Um, so therefore, we might not be together in, in, in that term of thing. But, but, but for us, our humanity, for us who we uh, deal with on a daily basis and this kind of thing, we are together. What we have to do is, is, is give the antidote to our problem and, uh, and to solve our problem. But you know, we, we are not our own problem. This problem was put on us. You know, and we're just trying to survive the problem. Mm -hmm. you know, the best way we know how, mm -hmm. with the lack of resources that we have at our disposal. We're just trying our best to solve this problem from day to day. Okay. And in a lot of cases, we are solving it, but it's not on a large scale. It's on a minute scale that we're solving our problem. But our effort and our desire and our idea is to solve our problem. You know, not to just wallow in it. <laughs> you know, we're going we're gonna to take up the banner. And, uh, I heard Dr. Richmond, who's I mean, I love that brother because, you know, he, he, he speaks the truth about our condition, yeah. you know, and he just not only just started speaking the truth about yeah. our condition, his brother started, I know, 40 years ago when I first met him. Yeah, he spoke yeah. directly to sure. the cause from a historical perspective. Sure. Yeah, I caught most of that experience, and, but go uh, ahead. And that brother, you know, he, he, he had his finger on the pulse of who we are as a people, always have had, you know, that's why I love him and I support him, you know, but... Uh, we as a people, we'll find our way eventually, you know, once we start galvanizing our resources and moving toward that idea, you know. And we have to be led by an idea, not by a human being. We be led by a philosophy, not by just a human being. See, that way we incorporate our understanding and our consciousness, you know, and be guided by that idea and philosophy and consciousness. Because that's, and that's what, that comes out of the culture. Mm -hmm. it, that's, it's just not something that, you know, we just uh, get, wake up one morning and say, ah, I'm going to do this here, you know, because it's going to be short-lived. When we, <clears throat> when we ground in a culture, when we ground in people who have gone before us, which uh, we've had plenty of people who have been worthy that have gone before us and showed us the pathway. Okay. We hadn't always taken it, but, but the pathway is still there. All right. All we have to do is just go through that pathway. And, and heal ourselves in the process of overcoming. Okay, point well taken. I want to go to Brother Paul right now. Brother Paul, speak on that for us. Speak on the, in fact, you can piggyback on what he said or address the issue of unity, African-American peace, freedom, solution to the problem, ideas. Go ahead. We have, a, as a community, we have a complicated situation we're in. One of the things I realize is that, like Brother Jabril said over here, we have to, we have to galvanize each other to, for a certain cause. I honestly believe that if we are galvanized on a problem that we all know exists, such as our oppression, our inequality, then we can start moving forward in the solution. A lot of the brothers and sisters out here think we're not united. And that's because they are not a part of the solution. That's true. Mm -hmm. What we have to recognize is that we have to start <coughs> off at some point with the ones that know what the struggle is all about. Say and that again. Uh, many African Americans don't see themselves as a part of the solution. They don't, they don't, don't see, see themselves them? okay. in a problem. In it, okay. 
You know, it. you have it. certain levels it. of consciousness. I got it. And some people become comfortable. Yeah. And they accept the situation, the status quo. But most of us are suffering. And the ones that are suffering will galvanize towards a solution. And one of the things I recognize is this. It, 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 I, I take this from a, a queen of ours, Jasira Manchu. And what she said is, it's free your dome. See, freedom comes from freeing your mind. And as long as we are in this oppressed society, and we don't recognize what the problem is, then we'll never be free. So when, when we first start off with the solution, we have to recognize that it's going to be bits and pieces that are going to come together in the long run to accomplish the main goal, and that's to liberate our people and to enlighten our people. Our condition isn't something that happened overnight, so our solution is not going to manifest overnight. Brother Jabril is, is tackling the youth. And that's one phase of what we have to do. But like he said, there's a number of situations, another, uh, so many different issues going on with our community that we have to have other brothers like Jabril tackling the other issues. So later on we can come together for a, a main cause, and that's to liberate our people. Okay, like liberate our people. Dr. Talu, may I pose a double question to you? Yes, sir. And therefore you will do what you usually do, put it in perspective from a practical <laughs> standpoint. Is the solution facing African Americans one of buying from one another, supporting one another, loving one another, and stop hating against one another and dim and putting those petty jealousies <coughs> on display. And I hate to compound and load up on you so tough, but I, I think you can have it. Break it down right. for us. One thing about unity is that you cannot have it unless your family is united. Mm. Your immediate family, your wife, husband, children, grandparents are all united. That's one of our, that's our major problem. Family. Most of our, yeah, most of our disunity comes as a result of our fragile relationships in our homes. And so when you deal with the money situation based on the family, our, the women folks control how money is being spent in the black community across the board. Okay. They make that decision because they manage the household funds. Okay? If they don't spend the money in the appropriate areas that support our economic infrastructure, then we'll never find unity among ourselves. They have to be the one to pick up the banner and say, look, from, from uh, this day forward, I'm going to start spending more of our household resources with black business community, or with black businesses, okay? Now, our, fr our fragile relationships in the household also means that uh, we could lose our families if we, the men, make the wrong decisions about things. Our women tend to uh, grab the resources and, and break away if we don't, if we make a poor decision or a bad decision about something. It could be anything. It doesn't make any difference. And this is one of the reasons why we have families, uh, men and women who have been in marriages and relationships multiple times. Okay? Because of the mere fact that the, the relationship foundations that are in other ethnic groups around the world are not a part of our foundation. Okay. So, if a bad decision is made and <coughs> one's family is grounded, can one recover from those bad decisions? And it sounds like you are saying that the supporting of one another economically is part and parcel of the solution. Are you also saying that the support, the loving, the 
jealousy and not hating is yeah. also a part of that. Yeah, that, yeah. See, that solution. See, in, in any situation, in any relationship, it is not about right now. Mm -hmm. It's an investment. See, life, life on every level is but an investment. And you are looking for returns from your investment. So when a man and woman gets together, that's not a right now thing. That's an investment into the future. Okay. okay? So, so the mistake today is just something that happens. But if you maintain that investment, it's going to pay off later on you. in the future. It, it if we give up our investment yeah. in the drop of a dime. Yeah, it sounds like you're saying it requires maturity and patience. We've got four minutes. I want to go to Brother Jabril. Four minutes. <laughs> well, sure is, you know, when you mentioned Malcolm earlier, you know, I, I, my mind went to the the, the, uh, the point that he made about you know, black men have to sit down and talk shop with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, that time has to come where we can, cause see that what reinforced the unity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's like minds coming together for a single purpose yes. or multiple purposes. You know, where we can sit down and kind of see each other eye to eye and talk shop with each other. And what Malcolm meant by talking shop <clears throat> is putting all the stuff on the table and all honesty, mm -hmm. acknowledging the God in you mm -hmm. and the brother and brother, mm -hmm. and as you all acknowledge the God in me. Mm -hmm. You know, therefore, you know, we got an eye-to-eye kind of understand the situation, and now we can go forward in some kind of philosophical approach to whatever the immediate problem is. Because, you know, we're going to solve our problems. Because we have no alternative. We can't turn back. You know what I'm saying? We're too far gone. We are the first people on this planet. All people came from us, including the Caucasian. He's an African. He and she is an African. Before the ice storm that got trapped behind in Europe. Right. You know, and they stayed there 7,000 years. <laughs> and when they entered into the sunlight again, they was white people. Okay. Albinos. Okay. Mutant albinos. You know, and their eyes was bleached and, and their hair was blonde and, and their skin was, they lost all pigment, okay. you know, this kind of thing. We got to educate them. Let them know that they are not all of this because of some skin color, it's some freak of nature. You know, see, we, in our effort to educate, we have to educate the world because who the cost of the other world? As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Okay. We was in the beginning and we are in the end. You, you, make, me, you make me think about something. <laughs> Um, toward the end of Malcolm's life, uh, in the book, I think it said that he was driving down the street, and this European, Eurocentric American. Uh, That's what she could do to help the movement. And he says, yeah, something, of, but it came down to him telling her that he was a human being and ask her, are you one? Mm -hmm. So ultimately, it boils down to the human mm -hmm. being, the human capacity. Is that right? One race. One race. On this planet. Okay. There ain't no seven or eight race. Now you got different ethnicities. Right. But it's one race. Great That's point. that human race. And we began it. Okay. You know, uh, we started point. the human race. We got one <clears throat> one minute. Brother Paul, close close it out for us, sir. Well, we have to recognize that it's a, it's time for practical application. Let's do something, whatever it may be, to help our community liberate themselves. If that's changing the educational system, is that if that's changing your lifestyle and how you eat and how you maintain your health and wellness, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, supporting our black community economically, mm -hmm. we have to recognize that there's not just one answer to the main solution. We all have to play our part by doing our bit. So true. So true. I think we found common ground. I think we hit upon a few agreements. Yeah, you know what I was going to say about that. No, that I had it different, wrong. You know, you were talking about some woman that asked him. I was talking about the student that asked him, a young female. Right okay. There, okay. Asked him that. You know, what could she do? He say, you know, the best thing you can do is go to your community I remember and educate that. your people. Mm -hmm. You know, to who we are and to who they are. You know, and let them know that you know what we got going as a movement is necessary. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, brother. But uh, that's the essence of what I was dealing with when he was talking about Malcolm. You know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm what you call a Malcolm disciple. Mm -hmm. I love the husband in a Shabbat. That brother, what he done for us, he, he gave us clarity. You know, he didn't sugarcoat nothing. 
He gave us the clarity to go forward, you know, unadulterated clarity. You know, so we can't confuse what Malcolm said with nobody else. Because <laughs> he was poignant and clear about what it was, you know. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and I believe that. I believe this philosophy. I carry it out on a daily basis, you know. And of course, you know, Malcolm God, Ben, Booker T. Washington, all these people played significant parts in our sojourn here in the Western world. But we, I chose Malcolm philosophy because I could deal with it. See, not only Malcolm in his philosophy, he incorporated nutrition and the proper guidance and proper eating habits and this kind of thing. He showed us that discipline in his own persona, in his own effort to take care of himself. You know, so uh, I admire that brother. You know, because when they in the, when he was assassinated, this kind of thing, I heard in the nation that you know uh, they say when they did the aut autopsy of getting the bullets out of whatever cell, all his organs were just clean, and pure, like a baby, like a baby. Okay. It's coming to the world, uncontaminated organs. Great point, yeah. Dr. Gallup. Well, I, I think one of the Another one of our problems as, as a people is um, our conditioning is one that, as I heard earlier, is placed, was and is placed on us. Okay? We didn't create our conditioning. Okay? The Caucasian people gave, not the Caucasian people, some Caucasian people gave us our condition, and we've been working on it for, for generations. Okay, the impact of what they did, you know, has caused us to be laborers, like, trying to get out of that situation. So all of our knowledge, all of our wisdom, and everything that and our resources are channeled toward overcoming what somebody else did to us. At some point in time, we're gonna have to drop all of that. We have to leave it alone and pick up where Almighty God planted us at at this particular time in the history of our humanity. In other words, we have to wake up and become men and women and see our future. See, the future is all that we have, right? Right. See, if we apply our intellect towards a vision, we'll unite. Surely. But if we have no vision, we can't unite. Because we preoccupied with what they did to us. Preoccupied. And we need, to get, we need to drop that. Okay? okay? Because our whole psyche, one, one point. Go ahead. Our whole psyche is reduced to what somebody else did to us. We respond, we eat, we think, we relate with each other, we do everything, go to church, everything based on what somebody else did to us. Yeah, that sounds like a reactionary <coughs> position. What about that, Brother Paul? Is it um, time to, the brother's calling for full responsibility as men to take control of our situation in spite of what somebody did to us. Over, he's saying overthrow that yoke and come up with Work toward the solution to the problem, full responsibility, and solve that problem in unity as men. Come up with freedom and live in peace. What about that? I would have to agree with the fact that we do need to be responsible and understand that in order for us to go ahead, we have to accept some responsibility that we played in it in order for us to move forward. At the same time, I have to recognize that all of our people that are going through this struggle are not at the same level. So if one of us needed that helping hand to get us out of that pointing fingers and blaming someone else, we have to have one in our community that's dedicated to helping those get out of that condition. We can't just leave them behind because they are actually in a worse situation still pointing the fingers. But we still have other brothers like ourselves that can carry on the message and move ahead with people who are at that level that have accepted that now it's time for us to take that responsibility. So I can't discard my brothers and sisters that are asleep. You know, those are the main enemies of our oppressors that they don't care about. 
So some of us have to be available to wake them up, to galvanize our forces so that we can become bigger and stronger against the oppressor. We have to recognize that there are certain things that they just don't want us to know. We are the driving force of the economic system in this community, in this nation. Other people come to this country and become rich just by setting up in our communities with the stores, with the family dollars. They know that we are the economic stability of this country. It's, we don't know that. That's what, about, what about the Koreans and the Arabs? Well, they know, they know in order to get ahead in life, you need to go set up camp in the black community and, 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 and amass wealth. We're the only people that don't know that. So we have to start off at different phases. We have to have the Marcus Garvey Institutes to start the kids off. We have to have an institution that's dedicated to the single parents so that we can grab her and his kids and Senator Marcus Garvey, train them on where they need to be in their life and take their kids out of their hands and start helping them by training them and teaching them the same things that their parents. Now that's two generations that we can help. Then we need to have an a, 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 a institution that can help the young adults that have been brainwashed and indoctrinated for so many years it's going to take a, a greater effort to release those chains. And it goes back to freedom, free your dome. The young adults and the adults who have been brainwashed and conditioned for so many years, we need to tackle the domes. We need to free their domes. We can get the kids young. Okay, we've got, we've got let's see, we've got, uh, um, we've got good time. Good yeah, I'm in Hollis Spring, Hot Spring, Mississippi, with, uh, uh, the brother with the, the school? No, no, with the, the brother. He came and did a lecture. Uh, Professor Griff. Okay. And uh, we was talking about somewhat of the same topic. Mm -hmm. And I may mention that in order for anybody to be free, they have to be free between the ears. Exactly. See, we have to free ourselves. And, 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 and the way we free, the way I free myself is through knowledge and information, to study, to taking up the mantle of, of, of these great people that have gone before us and done so many things on our behalf, in a manner of paying them back or, or being responsible as a human being on planet. I must free myself so I can continue that work. You know, this work has to be continued. We've had, we've had the best people that come before us. I mean, while we've been in the Western world. I mean, that laid out a track, and all we have to do is just free our dome, and that's between the ears. Mm -hmm. Once you free yourself between the ears, then you're free. Now, you might be still in oppressed, and you might still be in bondage, and you're still uh, not liberated. So the next question is, how do you liberate yourself? See, and what Paul was talking about, we liberate our, 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 ourselves through multifaceted cultural things how we put that glue together and how we glue these things okay. together to be one map and say one force. Yeah, okay. So we go from yeah. we go from being free as an individual, then we move to liberation as a collective. Sure. Now let me ask you about the African Americans who are asleep. And then Paul made mention of some responsibility there. So uh, is it our responsibility to take care of our own to wake up those who are asleep and bring sure. them forward. Ain't no doubt. Uh, I mean, you know, we talk about that's part talk of responsibility. About, talk about the behavior, free the mentality being. of African Americans in that regard. Well, you know, we know what got them like that. You know, we'll break for it down the last for thirty-five years, yeah, they've been dumbing down this generation. This is Generation yeah. X. Okay, oh, I'm glad you said that. So you're an educator, sure. And this has taken place primarily in the education system, the, the school system. Surely. Okay. You know, if you if you if you don't know anything, then you and and it, you, you fifty years old just now coming into the light, coming into the light of understanding of what transpired uh, thirty years ago. Then you you lost you short. You could been you've been cut short. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that the curriculum of the, of the public edu education system have been in a dumbed down mode all over the Western world. It's just not in, just in Memphis. Mm -hmm. You know, then you got people who, every time some people in this society said, what we need is vouchers so we can be responsible for the education of our community. 
a certain segment over here said, no, well, we need affirmative action. Mm -hmm. I say affirmative action is bull. Mm -hmm. Because what we need is equal access to the system. Okay, so what do you think about the vouchers? What do you think about the vouchers? The vouchers are a good thing. Okay. But the thing about it, if you don't see yourself as being independent, then you vouchers don't mean nothing to you. If you mm. don't see yourself mm. as, as, as having mm. an independent institution that's going to be the future, the train up the future, then you, yeah, you're going to be against vouchers because you don't know what it, what it means. It means economic prowessness to educate our children at the same time and get the dollars that the institution has always been getting. Okay, I want to go to Dr. Talu then. Dr. Talu, is the public educational system in America a twofold disadvantage in terms of one is being educated to conform to another system's of value along with the overall dumbing down process? And then it's using my imagination, I see individuals working behind the scenes to bring these neg negative effects about within the African-American community. Like Jabril said, not just in Memphis, but all over the country. Talk, speak on that. Yeah, yes. Um, Expand on it, if you will. Well, when you think about the one percenters versus the 99 percenters, the one percenters strategy you, uh, 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 as dictated by the Koch brothers is to create an a new economic system okay quite different than the hopes and dreams of the American people you know and, uh, American um, um, the American lifestyle they're, they're, they're wanting to create another Again, another economic system to bring about something totally different than that. Okay, and doing so, they use organizations um, to that they fund. Pardon me, they fund organizations that affect the legislation of city, counties, and states. Okay, and one of these things is um, uh, restructuring education. Why? Because. If the if the ninety nine percent of the common man and woman create an idea, come up with an idea, and grab hold to it and work on it, and work on it, and work on it, one day they might be competing with the one percent. So the power and the wealth would have to be shared. They don't want to share it. They want the one percenters to remain the one percenters forever. Okay. So what what? Uh, uh, what what strategy would they use, as 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 our brother Jibril say, um, dumb down? You know, get take American off for that high pedestal of dreams and hopes and all these types of things, and put them to the point of just workers, mm -hmm. just want a job, make make whatever they say you need to be making, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Whether you are financially able to have a good life or not is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. You make the money they say you're supposed to make, you'll be happy with that, and you go on. Okay? But the, the monkey wrench that's been thrown in the midst of all this is the black people. It's black Americans. Because our hopes and dreams are substantially different from Caucasian hopes and dreams. We still fighting. We're still pulling up. We're still pushing and, and trying to become. They always have been what they are. They're e more easily given up than we are. So we are the ones that's saving the nation, so to speak, by bucking all those uh, uh, strategies and systems. And we're coming up with our own. Okay. We're we out of time, but Brother Paul... Well, I'd, I'd like to go back to free our domes, you know. I'm one of those people that thought Head Start was to, to create an environment for our kids to be prepared for first through the 12th. Now, in this day and age, we, we changed the name of Head Start to pre, pre you mm -hmm. know, kindergarten. Pre-K. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they you know, it was, they changed Head Start to kindergarten. Right. So, now, we're having on the balance about pre-K. 
So you mean to tell me we are so dumbed down that we didn't recognize the first time they put pre put kindergarten in the head start to help us through the first through the twelfth grade that it didn't work, and so now they're creating another class called pre K that's supposed to do what kindergarten did, and it didn't work, and now we think that pre K is going to work. Mm -hmm. So we dumbed down. Mm -hmm. Okay, now who got us chasing hold, 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 yeah, hold chasing on just a second. Now are you talking about. The Koch brothers, or are you talking about the government? When you say they, who specifically? What well, are you talking? I'm talking about the one percenters that are okay. dumbing us down, okay. getting us to believe that okay. Head Start was going to work. Okay. Now and, they think of priest and, and so therefore, the Koch, bro Koch brothers are a part of that. No, we won't go. <coughs> you said you, one percenter. You Koch mentioned Koch brothers, brothers, and then he said they. I want to be yeah, clear on right. who you he were said, talking about. We're talking about the same thing. The, okay. the Koch brothers are the engines. Okay. Behind this. Okay. They're the engines behind it. It's not them and some other. It is them. It's those two brothers are the ones that's engineering a new America. And we, let, let's understand this too. Col when people are colonized, they tend to, under the pressure of colonization, they tend to agree with the colonizers. So the educational system that we have most of our people agree with it. Yeah. They don't okay. see a thing yeah. wrong with it. Yeah. I tell you, and another, thing, another thing. point is that the same people that agree with the status quo of the system, mm -hmm. you know, as it's going as it was, didn't say a word. See, when it comes to vouchers and empowering black people, it's all we got to do is have our own institution. And that's over with. That's over. Okay. That's, that's, that's gone. Right. When they're privatizing the jail system, you didn't hear a peep out of these people. They privatized the jail system right under our nose. And the leaders, so called petty bourgeois, Negro leadership, watched it go down, probably co signed it, probably complicit in that whole effort, Freeze their hadn't said a word. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because that's the first thing. Now they're going to privatize the school system. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have a school, you have to create a power. Yeah, mm -hmm. you 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 are written out of it. It, it goes back to something. So therefore, it's coming of us to let's say have an independent school. That's why I told you. Yeah, to to act. I want to talk to them mm -hmm. over Macklemore. Okay, but it's coming of you to start right. a school in the basement of your church or in your family center over here, life center over here. So it's named after somebody we don't know. Whatever. Yes, it's incumbent to, to act. It's coming of us to, to, to act have and, our and own to, independent school and to act decisively. Surely, yeah, because you, uh, what I've heard. Compositely is that African Americans in general, not all African Americans, but we speak in general terms, and we go specifically, right? Yeah. Uh, African Americans do not know they have, they are afflicted with this disease, and part of it is colonization. So they are comfortable within this particular d disease. Is, is the disease also uh, made to appear, is it beautified with? Shiny stuff, <laughs> shiny things. You know, uh, Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So let me it's the material let, let me add to that question. Is colonization also a mental, a particular kind of mentality? Take it, yes. and then right, Jabril, well, and then well, I don't know about you guys, but I gotta get out of here. Materialism is part of all systems of. Uh, Power versus the common people. It's what you're going to get, you know. And yes, they all those those uh, 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 bourgeois black Americans. They all getting paid. Sure. How they getting paid? They getting paid through salaries, sitting on bonuses, yeah. sitting, you know, little little pieces of money over here, little pieces of money over there. <laughs> you sure. know, walking around with certain privileges. They can go to the parties and they can walk around with the little wine glasses and. And in, interchange with some of the uh, 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 powerful people, okay. So our problem, as far as unity is concerned, is uh, multifaceted. See, we got to fight among ourselves, and we're afraid to do that. We have to do that. You look, it's like your children, okay. Sometimes you do have to spank your children, and I don't mean whip them. You have to spank them. Well, you okay, have to, you have to, man, you have to, you, you have to, you have to get their attention. You, you have to be firm with them. Sure. So we take a firm to, stand. Yes. Some people called it tough love. 
we have to not do the same around with thing him because it's necessary. Go ahead. We have to do the and same thing you among and our not. people. The bourgeois have to be spanked. Okay, <laughs> we're the parents. We have to spank them. Okay? We have to put fire on them. Yeah. We have to fight among ourselves. <laughs> That's true. And let me tell you this. Yes, go ahead. We fight in the street. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Dying like flies. Yeah. <laughs> but the people who are really having the impact on us, who happen to be black. Not being touched. Not being they're, touched. They're not being touched. And they, and they need to be touched. The guy Brother Paul. Our community has, it, 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 we have too much going on. And, and we have to recognize that we are creatures of amnesia. You know, when we talk about our bourgeoisie getting their palms greased and, uh -huh. and letting things go through that really doesn't help our community. Mm -hmm. We have to recognize that that was the same thing that happened millennia ago, <laughs> 500 years ago, maybe even earlier, you know, sooner than that, when they came with the trinkets and, and we gave them our land and everything. You know, we have to recognize the new trinket is the dollar bill, that Federal Reserve note that's not worth anything, that's not backed by gold. And we still believe that it's worth something and we've given up our lives. We're actually committed to having a lifestyle that's conducive to our slavery. We don't understand that the bus system was designed to get the slaves from their house to the plantation and now we're supporting the bus system. We don't understand that we're paying money to be involved, involved in, in, a, in, a, in a job, which is a plantation, and we are not workers, we're slaves, and we have to understand that we are allotted an hour of lunch so we can go and hurry and rush and go to their fast food joint to get their food and, and, and sacrifice our health. It's all about lifestyle. It's all about what we've been conditioned to believe and how we've been conditioned to live a certain way, and we got to break that from all facets. From, it's not from the schools. On you, you said something. You said something that concerns me. You said that we have too much going on. What, exactly what you said. In the African American community, we have too much going on now. Uh, we're short on time, but I, I want to hear you. I'll, I'll make that point real brief. Break down our, some of our problems what you're bigger about. than life, and I like to sum it up with the fact that if we recognize our problems being bigger than life recognize us eating an elephant and taking one bite of it out of it and out of it okay. at a time. And we'll basically overcome that problem. Okay. But we have to realize that it's not going to take it's not going to be overnight. Okay. We've got to take our time and I eat think it. I think Jabril you said something to that effect earlier. But can our can you shed some light on that? Oh that's the problem. That's right. Yeah. You know we on just, that idea. just like this we eat elephant. You know that's an old African property. Thank you. You buy one bite at a time. And if you think about it, in six months, half the elephant is gone. Year and a half, you know, the <laughs> elephant, there's nothing, no, no existence of an elephant that wants water. So uh, as we approach our liberation, then we must think in these terms of eating an elephant. Whatever the, the immediate situation is, then we just take that as, as a problem and solve it. And whatever the next situation is, we solve it. And we do that unilaterally. I mean, not unilaterally, but we do it collectively. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because, mm -hmm. see, we have to be collective. We have to create the coalition, the proper coalition for our community so we can take that approach and solve those kind of problems. You know, we can do it. We've done it before. I'd okay. like to close on that note. I would too. Sure, brother. All right, all right. Thank you, brother. Like Malcolm X said, by any means yeah. necessary. <laughs> <laughs>